church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Find somebody close by and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Amen, amen, amen. I am most certain that God in heaven is smiling right now as we have been lifting up and giving his name praise all day long. I tell y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I look forward to Sunday morning. I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I look forward to the opportunity that I have to come into the house of God with the people of God for the purpose of worshiping God. This is unlike any other. You ain't going to get this in Walmart. You ain't going to get this at CVS. You're not going to get this in Walgreens. You're not going to get this on your job. The only place you're going to get this is in the house of the Lord. Amen. We leave all the other stuff on the outside and we come on the inside with praise on our mind because God is so good to us. Did somebody say he's been better to us than we can ever think about being to our own selves. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Amen. Certainly amidst everything that is going on in our world, amidst everything that is going on in your personal life, I would have you to know he's still good and he's still worthy of all of our praise. And that is why we're here on this morning to simply say, God, you bless me all week long. The least I can do is come out and give your name some praise on your day for what you have done in my life. And how many of y'all can testify and say that God ain't just started working in my life. God been working in my life. Somebody can testify and say, God ain't just showed up and make a way. God been making a way for me for a long time right about now. So I want you to remember that same God that did it before. So the next time you're facing a trial, the next time you're facing a test and you'll know, man, God got this situation. He got it and he got me in his hand. We thank those of you that are tuning in this morning that are watching us via live stream. As always, as I say, you could have went and stopped by anywhere that you wanted to this morning. We're just so thankful that you stopped by and joined in with us here on this morning. Today is what is um, we call our all-in Sunday. We know um, it's much different from what we did on, on last year, but we thank God for the opportunity of, number one, being alive on today, um, and then number two, to have this opportunity to be here on today. So as, always, uh, as has already been said, Said, we want each and every person that if you are not involved in something, we want you to get involved in something. If you are not a part of something, we want you to become a part of something. We want all hands on deck. We want everybody involved in something. And when all of the people of God, because let me tell you, everybody's not a finger. Everybody's not a toe. Everybody's not an ear. And you'll look crazy if you walk around with a finger where your ear is supposed to be. Folk will be looking at you crazy. So when we all realize where God wants us to be, what is our gift? What is our talent? Get where God wants you to be and exercise that gift. And you'll see how the kingdom of God and the work of the church will go forward when we all work together. Amen. It has it's already been read on today. I want you to follow me to the gospel of St. John chapter number nine. And we're going to begin reading at verse number one. And I want to conclude at verse number 11 this morning. Um, the grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of God shall stand forever. I want to say something um, on this morning that's going to be very practical to us. It's going to be a teaching that is important for us to learn. Because a lot of us have the misconception that just because we experience heartache, pain, and trouble in life, that we've seen. A lot of us feel as though because we experience turmoil, because we experience strife, that we must be on the opposing side of God. But I would have you to know that many times in our life, God puts us through situations so that his glory and so that his power may be shown forth in your life. God got to let you go through the storm because if he did not let you go through the storm, you think you did it by yourself. So God has to take you to a place to where you know you can't do it. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. Preacher can't do it. And you realize only God can help me in this situation. So John chapter 9 beginning at verse number 1. If you got it, say I'm there. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm there. All right. 
The Bible says, and he was passing by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, Master, Teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man or his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This came about so that God's work might be displayed in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said these things, he spit on the ground, made some mud from the saliva and spread the mud on his eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he left wash and came back seeing. His neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, isn't this the one that used to sit begging? Some said, he's the one. Others said, no, but he looks like him. But he kept saying, I am the one. So they asked him then, how were your eyes open? In verse number 11, he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So when I went and washed, I received my sight. Amen. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, the Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Um, our message for this morning is understanding the favor of God. Amen. Understanding the favor of God. Whether you know it or not. You may not be consciously waiting, but all of us are either consciously or unconsciously waiting on something to change in your life. Whether it's not in your personal life, you're wanting something to change in your finances. You're wanting something to change in your children's life. You're wanting something to change in your relationships, in your work environment. You're wanting something to change. There's always some area in your life where you say, Lord, I want to mature. Lord, I want to develop. Lord, I want to grow. Lord, I want to expand. Isn't it amazing how you can get a vision and the vision can be so exciting that you celebrate the vision? And then you wake up in a reality that's so dismal and so different from the vision. And you see that there's a big difference between what you believe in your spirit and what is actually going on in real life. So reconciling the difference between what you believe and what you see, church, is what faith is all about. For faith is the what? Substance of things that we hope for and it is the evidence of things that we cannot see. The Bible says that by it the elders obtain a good report. So I need faith to bridge the gap between what I believe and what I'm dealing with at this particular time. So now, how do I get faith? The question is, how do I obtain faith? We know Romans 10, 17, what? So then, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That means when I come together, I didn't come together so much to come to praise the Lord, because I, you ought to be praising the Lord all week long, amen, somebody? So I didn't so much come to see you, because I see people all the time, but I come that I might hear a word that would just stay in the womb of my spirit and produce a faith and a commitment that would anchor me as I go through the storms of this life. Tell somebody you need to wait on the Lord. Now, Isaiah teaches us about waiting. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, Isaiah says, don't say you're waiting just by sitting down. Don't say you're waiting just by crossing your legs. Don't say you're waiting just by sitting there and twiddling your thumbs. He said, while you're waiting, you ought to be renewing your strength. So you should mount up on wings like eagles. You should run and not get weary. Then you ought to walk and not faint. Why should you renew your strength? Because when the thing that you're waiting for happens, you're going to need strength to deal with the backlash of walking in the favor of God. Amen. That went over your head. 
They that wait upon the Lord shall have renewed strength. They shall build up and get ready. In your waiting period, church, you ought to be getting ready for your favor period. So that you are strong enough to bear the weight of God's favor on your life. Because when people see you walk in favor, they don't see you as the person being blessed the first of men to come. They get jealous of what you got going on. They think that your favor was at their expense and that they don't want to celebrate the thing that you've been waiting on all your life and you have to have the strength to stand up in, the, in their face and set your face like Flint and make up in your mind that I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care what you think. All I know is what God has for me is for me. Amen. So the Bible says here, in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of St. John, that Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from birth. His disciples were so hungry for information, they had what we'll call a crash course test in faith to understand who they were and how they were to operate. Say, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Whenever we have an adversity in our lives, we have a tendency in our own human reasoning to always want to understand why this happened. Who can I blame for this? Where, where I'm, where I'm like this because my parents were like this. I'm like this because I'm black. I'm like this because I'm white. I'm like this because my father, he left me because of this, because of that. We always look for some reason to explain the troubles of life. Jesus blows all of this out of the water and he says, neither did this man sin or his parents. In other words, it was nothing that he did to bring it upon himself. Oh God, he, he's, I want that to sink in for y'all this morning. Because somebody here this morning blaming themselves for something you ain't had no responsibility in. He said it was nothing that you did that brought this upon you, that brought this affliction upon you. This happened. It is nothing that your parents did. Y'all know bad things happen to good people right now. So rather then spend your energy trying to figure out who do we blame for our condition. You ought to be preparing yourself because God, once you get the breakthrough in your life, favor comes after that. Look at this. He says, neither has this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. That is a profound statement. Jesus is suggesting here that the works of God are made manifest through the adversities of men. I'm going to say that again. That the works of God are made manifest through the adversities of men. In other words, if you didn't go through anything that was adverse, God would not have a way to show you how strong he is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That, that when you want to see the works of God made manifest in your life, look for somebody who's in the most deplorable situation. Because God's strength is made perfect in weaknesses. When we are at our worst, then God is at his best. And, and just because you are in crisis mode right now does not mean that you are going to spend the rest of your life in crisis mode. Some of y'all know that just as soon as the storm came, the storm got to go after a while. Tell somebody, I'm glad storms don't last always. Too many times, more than not, we have a tendency to want to categorize people. And we got our file cabinet. We want to put people in the different files that we have. This is a good person. This is a bad person. This is a successful person. This person is a failure. This is the black sheep of the family. This is the person that has favor. But I want to warn you against snap judgments. 
Because some of the very people who lag behind and look like they weren't ever going to bud or blossom or bring forth fruit may be the very person that is next in line for an appointment with their destiny. But because you judged them prematurely before they had developed and gone through their changes, you might ask somebody out that God put a check in the block and said, I'm going to bless her despite what you think, despite what you feel, despite what was said about her. I got a blessing just waiting around the corner. It might not happen in January. May not happen in February. May not even happen in 2021. But as long as I have faith in God, it's going to come to pass after a while. Many of you have lived your life at times with a sense and a feeling that change is going to happen. Always. You're wanting something to change in your life. You've gone through adversity and challenge. And if you, really, if you want to be real about it, majority of the time, you just want to give up. You want to throw your hands up. You want to throw in the towel. But at the moment of your greatest despair, God stepped in right on time. Now, I, I would like to be more intelligent and more articulate than that and say specifically what is going to happen, but I'm not like the people on TV. I can't fortune tell. I can't, I can't prophesy. You know, I can prophesy lie, but I can't prophesy. You know, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow at 6 o'clock in your house, in your car, your job. I don't know what's going to happen, but God knows. Isn't it amazing, church, how you can hold on to something a promise from God that at times you can't even describe, that you can't even explain, but you're still holding on to it for dear life because God promised you that. So, see, I believe something is going to happen. I am not going to be experiencing this sickness all of my life. I believe the word of God with his stripes. I am already healed. Lord, I raised them the best that I could. They know who you are. They know what your word said. Lord, I'm not going to stop praying until they come back to you. Lord, I know my faith, my strength is getting a little weary right now. But Lord, I know in your word I can find the strength strength that I need to make it to the other side. Now, this business about this man being blown, born blind, that means that from the moment he was an infant, he was blind. Never seen anything. Didn't know what it was to experience sight. He never seen the sunrise. Never seen the sun go down. Grew up in a world where people described and talked about stuff, but he could not hear it. And you have to realize that in the culture that he's living in, if you were born blind, if you were born disabled, they just figured you must be in some kind of sin. Your mama must have did something. Your daddy must have did something. Somebody, your grandma, somebody was involved in something that this, that, this, that this thing should fall upon you. And isn't it amazing how you can live in a world and in a community, a neighborhood, a city where somebody's going through great blessings and at the same time somebody else going through a storm in their life? But we recognize that the word of God says that God causes the rain to come down on the just as well as the unjust. So I'll not be a person that sits back and looks at another person's storm, looks at another person's experience and judge them and talk about their experience. Because just like they're down today and I'm up right now, I could be down tomorrow and then they be up. So you better learn how to treat people right while they're going through their storm because you never know who's going to have to give you a piece of bread when you're going through your storm. You you never know who will have to offer you a cold drink of water while you're going through your soul. So you want to always appreciate somebody else when they are experiencing the troubles that they face in this life. Now you have to, ex you have to respect people that are able to grow through adverse circumstances in life. People don't understand what you have to deal with. I almost wanted to throw in the towel. I almost said forget it. But we have to understand, man, life is full of pressure. 
And many times in our life, if we be real about it, we are not prepared for the blows that Satan throws at us. Man, I was expecting him to come on Tuesday. I didn't expect him to come on Monday morning. He caught me off guard. I wasn't ready. I was not expecting him. That's why it is important, as the Bible said, that we always be on guard. That we always be on watch. Because our adversary, he's gone out. You don't know when he's coming, but you know he's on the way. Be prepared for him. You ain't prepared for no thief to break in your house. But I'm sure Smith and Wesson are already locked and loaded, waiting on him to get there. There has to be something else. We have to get to a place in our life where we have total belief in God and in the word of God. I want to give you something, and, it, it, you, and you may not know this, but God's word cannot be absolute, and your opinion be absolute at the same time. God's word and your opinion cannot level up to be the same thing. So the, the issue where it comes with a lot of us, where we find it hard to understand God's word and what God is doing, it's because we approach the word of God based on what we already seen, based on what we already know, based on what we already experienced. So when you come with that type of attitude, you already got God in a box and he can only go to the right. He can only go to the left. So far, you got to give God room to have free course in your life. Stop trying to box God in and settle down God just off of what you know. Can I tell you something? We don't know all there is to know about everything. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care whatever you got behind your name. You will never get to a place in your life where somebody can't teach you something you don't know. When he got ready to heal this man, the Bible says... He didn't go down to CVS. Nope. He didn't go down to Rite Aid or Walgreens. He didn't call the Walmart pharmacy. He didn't do any of that. Because he was God's medicine cabinet wrapped up in flesh. So the Bible says that he spat on the ground and made mud out of the spit. Now, the man can't see Jesus. He can't see him. But imagine with me, if you will, you're blind and you have come in the presence of this healer that everybody been talking about and about he's able to heal. He has called you out of the crowd. You have moved toward him in the dark. He is getting ready to heal you. So you think and then you hear him. Isn't it funny how God's method of bringing you out may not be the method that you would have chosen. Because if y'all would have been real about it, Jesus, if you really body, body, go and heal me right here in the scene, go ahead and do what you say. Why well, I got to go all the way down there to the pool of Salon and do something that you can do right now. Because can I tell you something? God not going to do everything for you. You're going to learn how to get up and do some things for yourself. God going to do his part, but you got to do your part as well. We could spend all night right. He didn't, he, he didn't always bring you out through the person that you wanted him to use. But thank God that he brought you out of the situation. And he didn't bring you out as comfortable and as classy and reserved as you would have liked to have been. But thank God that he brought you out of the situation. So this leads to a question. How bad do you want to get out of your situation? See, there are people who want changes in their life as long as it don't cost them nothing. As long as you don't have to give up anything. I want the Lord to bless me. I want to lose 50 pounds. But I can't put down my ice cream. I got to have my... I want to get a degree, but I don't feel like going to school. I want to get out of debt, but I don't believe in paying nobody. I want to 
want to increase my income, income, but you don't want to go to the job that you got now. <laughs> You'll be surprised that people who want things but are not willing to go through what it takes in order to get it. Amen. Whew. I want to say, you just got to do whatever it takes. What I like about this man, the condition that started from his birth, he lived through it all of his life, but all of the while, he was growing up. I know that looks funny because we got, we got a, little, you know, a little thing going on, but now he was a child, and he's been experiencing the same predicament all of his life. How many of y'all know what it's like to grow up? How many of y'all know you can be 30 and still growing up? How many of y'all know you can be 75 and still be growing up? What, 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 I, what I like about this man, we, we're just now getting to the point now when you get to that place and you've gotten to a point that you no longer care what people think, where you, know, you don't care what people feel or how to man, I've been through too much in my life. I deserve some type of peace. I deserve to be at a place in my life where me and God, I had a good place now. The same stuff that I was struggling with when I was at 25. Even though it may not be out on Front Street right now, if you push the right button, I'll go back and pick it up. So this man, this man, these people that come to him after this man has been healed, and they ask him, they say, they say, they say, who did who did this for you? He said, the man, the man named Jesus did it for me. They said, take us to him. I'm going to take you to somebody I ain't never seen. I'm going to show you somebody that I have never laid eyes on for myself. And I want to tell you something. When you're getting ready to be blessed by God, expect there to be a lot of chatter. You can't be blessed. And everybody just sit back and fold their arms and say, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's your birthday. Go ahead and pour. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Go ahead. God just blessing you. He doing it for you right now. You're not going to find people like that. That's going to be a whole lot of, I don't believe it. I don't think that's right. Who she thinks she is. Who he think he is. But in spite of the chatter, if God bless you, you bless. Tell somebody, don't let the noise stop you. All the while, they are arguing. This man is looking. There's a sunset. Look at that. There's a willow tree. There's a palm tree. There's a brook. Water moving through the brook. Man, I, I've never seen all of this. So, man, what is that? What is that? I have never had the opportunity to lay my eyes on any of this stuff before. Man, you must have experienced something with Jesus. All of these people have been telling me about what he could do. All of these people have been telling me he had the power to heal. But can I tell you something? People can tell you stuff all day long. Until you believe it for yourself. Until you try it for yourself. Man, I'm, I'm sure somebody can tell me, man, Sister Cobb can make some bad collard greens. But the only way I'm going to know how bad your collard greens are is if I come by and get a bowl for myself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. You will never know how good God is until you have experienced him in your own life. I don't care what you've seen him doing the lives of other people until he knocks on your door. It won't be as real to you as it is when he's moving in somebody else's life. They brought the man to the forefront and they said, you mean this controversial Jesus, this water walking Jesus, this scout about Jesus, the Jesus that doesn't follow rules and doesn't obey instructions, this Jesus that didn't come from our university, this Jesus that wasn't endorsed by our group. 
He healed you. Yeah, that's one. This man is a sinner. Blind man said, I don't know what school he went to. I don't know what board of bishops ordained him. I don't even know whether he's a sinner or not. All I know is I once was blind. Thank God. Now I'm able to see. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's working for me. I, he said, it's working for me. Y'all may not have believed it. Y'all may not believe in his power. But I have experienced it for myself. Can't nobody tell me what he's not able to do. Because he's done it in my own life. So he's opened my eyes. I was blind. But now, I am able to see things I never experienced before. Now, I am able to experience it. And you would think that once you have seen somebody experience a blessing like this man has experienced, that when he came back among the people, Man, somebody would have thrown up, somebody would turn the music on. They got that doing an electric slide. I mean, something, something's going on. We need to celebrate. Look at what has happened to him. Yeah. Yes. But everybody got something to say. Mm -hmm. Who did? Mm -hmm. Ain't you the same one that was blind? Man, you been begging all over that man. You begging my mama. You begging my grandmama. You begging. Every, every time I come down the street, you out there asking for something. You begging for something. Is this not the same? Man. Yeah. 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 Look at that Say that's him. Psalm said, No, I didn't hear him. It just looked like him. <laughs> but I can see him. It's me. It's me. It's me. I was blind. But he opened my blinded eyes. It's me. I want people to know it was me. I experienced that. And let me tell you, when God brings you out of a situation, you can't help but tell your testimony. When God delivers you out of a situation, you can't help but go and tell somebody what God has done in your life. But the thing about this man, man, I can tell you about it, but I can't take you to it. Because I never laid eyes on him. He simply gave me instructions. And I obeyed him. Can I tell you something? That's what faith is. Faith is a substance of things. I'm sure, I'm sure that man, probably in the back of his mind, man, I'm going to go over here and wash your feet from that. What's up? What's up? All right. That would be the back of his You know that that's the devil puts it yeah, yeah, yeah. in. No matter how much faith you got, the devil always just wants to insert just a little bit of that. I'm sure the whole time that man, he'd be on his way, he'd be on his way to the pool. Feeling his way now, man. I'm sure I'm not going to be mad if I get all the way over here. <laughs> I get all the way over here. And I'm watching this pool. And on that day, I'm going to be upset. I'm, I'm going to have to come back. We're going to have to come to a little bit. Come to Jesus. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to talk about this because you have put me out here. You have set me up. And now people are going to laugh at me because what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And now I'm looking like a isn't that just like us sometimes? <laughs> because truth be told, a lot of times we want to get ahead of God. Yes, sir. And we want to help God out with the situation. Yes, and then when God don't bless our plans, oh. and when God don't bless what we want to do and it fails, and now people are looking at me what we wanted to do and it's failed, oh God will not be with you. It's not that God wasn't with you, but you got to learn to let God's time and work out in your life. Stop trying to rush God.
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prepare myself. So I cannot allow what's going on around me to get inside of me and fester. Because once that happens, doubt has taken root. Anxiety has taken root. Disbelief has taken root in myself. So I have to be renewing my strength. Yes. I have to be getting myself ready. Amen. And another thing I want you to understand about the faith of God. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard it. Faith ain't fast. That's it. Can we show you a good? Favor is not fair in the eyes of me. What God is doing 
your life. Keep, keep, keep your mind focused on where God has you. And I'm sure somebody can testify and say, man, God has brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Ooh, somebody can truly say, man, where I was then is not where I am right now. God has done the work in my life. And guess me what? If he was good enough to come out there and get you and bring you to where you are right now, he can take you. But you're going to have to root your faith. You're going to have to put your belief in him. And don't get mad when he's doing it for somebody else. But rejoice to know the some fact. God is still working. He's still saving. He's still working miracles in our lives. So if he ain't doing it for me today, again, tomorrow is coming. It's coming. It's coming. A day is coming, coming. to where I'll be able to say, just like this man, I once was blind. But now I am able to see. And can y'all say, it took this man 20 some years to get his blessing. So stop trying to put a time period of what God is going to do. And you're like, Lord, I need you to do this in a week. Lord, I need you to do this in a month. Lord, I need this done by this time. God does not work according to your schedule. God does not work according to your time and what you got planned. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And neither are our ways his way. The Bible said, as far as the heavens are from the earth, so far his way above our ways. God got a plan for your life. And the plan that God has for your life is better than the plan that you got for your life. So when God debunks your plan and puts his plan in your path, say, God, but man, apparently this is where you want me. Apparently this is what you have for your life. Lord, pray, help me to stay settled. Help me to stay focused on what you would have for me to do. Yes. And don't let me get my mind off track. Yes, Worried about what you're not doing. Yeah. And learn how to appreciate him for what he is doing in your life. Stop getting upset because of what has not happened. Because you just don't do a lot of things that could have happened to you. He kept it from happening to you. The bullet that hit somebody else could have hit you. The car wreck that took somebody else out could have took you out. But he was a head. Instead of complaining about what has not happened yes. and what he has not done, mm -hmm. thank you for what he is. Thank you for what he has done. Yes, and thank you for what he is preparing to do. And Lord, for the dangers that I didn't even see coming. But you saw a mile away. You kept me from the hurt, the harm, and the danger. Lord, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you because, Lord, the man that I laid down. Man, you don't need to go out there and why man, you can 
last all your life. Ain't nothing changed by his time. Ain't nothing gonna change so far. And look, ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how people that you think will be your biggest encourager sometimes turn into your biggest discourager? And whenever they see you trying to go forward and do the things of God, they always tell you X, Y, and Z or why you should not and why you don't need I need somebody around me that's going to encourage me in the word of God. I need somebody around me that's going to build me up. I don't need no weights on my ship. I need wind for myself. Amen. God is at work, church. Yes, he is. He's at work in your life. And even though he's in that's our problem. If we can't see him, we don't him. believe he's working. Yeah. 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 If we cannot see him moving things around, if we cannot see changing, we don't believe he's doing yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. But the work church, the biggest work that God is doing is not on the outside. It's on the inside. So let your daily prayer be as the psalmist said, created me.
If you would but come, he will receive you. Amen. If you would but come, Jesus said, whosoever will, let them come. Come from the loose way of sin and let him hide you in the blood of Jesus. The only way that your sins can be forgiven, the only way that you can be washed, the only way for you to be added into the body of Christ is that you come in contact with his blood. I, I don't have it in his blood, I don't have a Bible in my pocket. But I know that once you go down and get water, you contact his blood. The Bible says that just as Jesus was Lord down into the earth, and that while you're lower down into the water, you Die to yourself as you are in the water and you rise up. A new creation, the Bible says, to walk in a newness of life. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new because I am now a new creation in Jesus Christ. So come back here in this word, Romans chapter 10, verse number 17 says, So then faith, come back here, hearing by the word of God. And the hearing you must believe. The same thing. You have to believe you repent of your sins. What is repentance? A change in my mind that produces a change in my actions. And after repentance, I confess with my mouth the sweetest name, no more tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And after that, you are willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Have your sins washed away. Never come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. I didn't say the crowd was going to be. Awesome. Amen. Amen. And aren't y'all glad that the crowd ain't got that to do what you get in heaven? Yeah. Ain't you glad that people ain't got to check off of whether or not you're going to make it in? Yeah. But it's all according to what you have done mm -hmm. in this body. Those things good and those things bad. So my friend, my brother, my sister, beloved, don't put off today what you plan to do tomorrow. If you're here and you're not a Christian, you're not saved, you need to take that chance today. God, every chance that you get, every opportunity, every day you wake up, he's just giving you another opportunity. Amen. Yes, he he's just giving you another chance yep. to make right what is not currently right in your life. Amen. So if you're here today, and maybe you're already a Christian, and if you are in sin, don't nobody know you in sin like you know. Yes, sir. People speculate, but they don't know. Yes, so if you are in sin, you need to make that right with God. If you die in your sin, what God is, that not go. So if you're here today, you're not a Christian. Become a Christian today. If you're here today, you're already a Christian. You're struggling, you're straining. Man, we want to pray for you. Allow us to pray for you. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they are better than mine. So my brother, my sister, my friend, if you're here, you're subject to the invitation. Why not come? Now, together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Restore my spirit, Lord.